So one day I was bored sitting on top of a Master Chief Halo figure when it finally hit me. Stop sitting on me. After recovering from my month long coma, I then went to my dog for answers and instead he got stressed out from all the questions and proceeded to steal my dad's oatmeal. Despite these setbacks, my big brain came up with this topic, how to prepare for a wipe in Escape from Tarkov. This video will teach you everything you need to know to break off those Tarkov trading stilts and start the wipe with some wicked momentum, just like Forrest Gump did when he had the zoomies. First, let's talk about what a wipe is for those who haven't experienced one yet. Step one, take some toilet paper. Every five or six months on average, Tarkov will wipe, and that means resetting everyone's character progression. You are essentially back to the character creation screen where you had to select if you wanted to be a Yusek or a bear. We don't really know when any of the wipes actually are, but you usually start to see some pre-wipe events about a week or so before a wipe happens. This means if you see these events, go wild if you already have the game. Soon, you'll be starting off with a fresh stash, kind of like the one I got right here on my face. Am I right, ladies? That's right, I am talking to all 0.1% of you. Just wanting to know that I appreciate you too. But I love everyone, just to be clear. Now that we know what a wipe is, let's talk about all the best gear you have access to at the start of a wipe. As far as armors go, the 6B23 barter from Pop War, which requires one propane, is a great choice. It's a level three class body armor. Now, why class three is a bit important because at the start of a wipe, not many players are gonna have access to ammo that will actually penetrate a tier three vest. Now there are a few, and I'll get into the weapons section later, but a class three armor is actually a very good armor to have when a majority of the time you're gonna see a lot of things like SMGs, pistols, or shotguns. It stays just about good until you unlock the flea market at level 15. By that point, you can start getting up into tier four armors and level two traders, but pre-flea market, class three armor is pretty much as premium as it gets besides the armors that you start with, or besides, you know, the armors you can get off like rogues and raiders if you encounter them during your first stages of the wipe. Another good barter for a class 3 armor is actually the Untar barter from Ragman. It's three energy drinks and I show you a great place to get these. Um, I have guides already to get these. The best spot is in the shelves of Goshan where they have all the food on the back left if you're uh, facing towards uh, the back of the store from the front. So the back left area will have a whole bunch of food and you can definitely get three energy drinks for this trade. I will also like to point out that the one propane is also very easily found on interchange for the 6B23 armor. If you don't have access to these barter items, then your next best bet is just the Paka from Ragman. Um, it's a class two armor, so not quite as good as the Untar or the 6B23. However, it will still save your life. A lot of early game frustrations can come from shotgun scabs or, you know, other players rocking a shotgun. Buckshot is stopped uh, very promptly by a Paka or level two. It can definitely save you from a shot or two of pellets. No armor if you want is okay, but I would always run at least a Paka for that like buckshot protection, especially when it comes to scabs, because as we all know, scabs are like terminators with like heat seeking missiles and that buckshot will find a way. As far as helmets go, you have two I like to kind of go back and forth on. It depends on the situation, how well I'm starting out the swipe. If I have a good chain going, the first helmet is the SSH68, the nipple helmet from Ragman. It goes for about 22k. It's class three armor. So again, stops you from SMG shots. You'll get a few bounces here or there, especially how helmets are actually kind of better now that there's like damage or penetration drop off over range and this stays the case like all the way into like late wipe because the bounce chance doesn't change doesn't matter what caliber of bullet you're using as far as i know um you could have a tier six ammo which is in, in my opinion uh that is any bullet with over 60 pen and that will that could easily just bounce right off a helmet if you get unlucky as the shooter so helmets i am always recommend you wear the only problem with this helmet is 
it comes with a minus 13% ergonomic, so it's gonna affect your ADS speed a little bit. Something I like to do is pay a little more for the 6B47 from Propor. It goes for about 33K, so it's a solid 11K upgrade over the nipple helmet, but that ergonomic penalty drops down to minus 7% instead of minus 13, and uh, there's some other penalties with speed and turn speed and stuff like that. Um, those are also better on the 6B47. So I like to go for the 6B47 because I don't like the harsh penalties of the nipple helm, but the nipple helm is cheap and good old reliable if you want. Finally, it's time to talk about the damage dealers. Here are some weapons I recommend that should turn your enemies into some delicious free shavakadu. I will also point out as a quick disclaimer that I am personally not the biggest shotgun guy, so this list won't have any shotguns on it, however they can be an effective weapon to use early wipe. The first gun for me, uh, my favorite gun to start a wipe with is the Mosin infantry weapon, it's about 35k from Popor. It is great for the sniper skill because that is something that you'll need to progress for your quest lines. And also it's it's kind of good at any period during a Tarkov wipe. Even the basic bullet, the LPS round from Propor is fairly cheap considering it has over 40 pen. That means with the Mosin infantry weapon, there's almost nothing that will stop any of your rounds at the start of a wipe. 99.9% .9 of players are not gonna have the armor to block a shot from a Mosin round. It is a great weapon to use if you're more of a sharpshooter and like to play that play style. However, if you are more of a rush and suppressive type of player, the SMGs like the PPSH or the MP5 are very good weapons to use as well. The PPSH, has TTAKBS rounds that give the weapon a 15% accuracy and minus 15% recoil buff just for choosing the ammo type. That is insane considering how quickly this gun can shoot and how much DPS you can get down, especially when people aren't running the nicest tiers of body armor. Same thing with the MP5. As a slower firing rate than the PPSH does, but the 9mm rounds, the PST, are both cheap, widely available, and the gun is very controllable as is. However, if you're looking for more range, but not quite the single shot action of the Mosin, the next two guns I recommend would be the SKS or the VPO-136. Both of these weapons are pretty similar. They both use 7.62 PS rounds. Um, this round has over 30 pens, so it's going to be going through your tier 3 body armor. And when it comes to the SKS, it requires no magazines, so you save a little time and money there too. The VPO 209 is essentially the SKS. It shoots the 7.62 PS rounds, however, it's more moddable but also a little more expensive. The SKS comes at 21k and the VPO comes at 32. However, I personally prefer if I'm doing well and have the money to go for the VPO. I like that you can have 30 round magazines, even though you have to manage them a bit more. And I like the fact that you can put early scopes, sights, and foregrips on it, whereas the SKS, you're pretty much just getting the rifle as is. Any of these weapons should have no problem in chopping down any enemies you come up against. It really just depends on your playstyle. If you want to be more of the long range, or uh, maybe you're crazy like me and use the Mosin infantry on factory anyway. Totally up to you. Now that you know how to gear up your PMC, it's time to talk experience. Now there are two main ways to level up in Escape from Tarkov. The first one is quests. Quests provide good XP, especially as you start to get through a few of the earlier ones. The XP rates start to ramp up drastically. And the quest unlocks are very important because they'll give you access to armor, meds, and ammo, and all sorts of other equipment that are only obtainable through the quest trees. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth on all of the quests because I already have quest guides out there. My channel is full of them. I have a quest series guide that takes you from level 1 to 15 very quickly. And 
I also have a movie-like show where I go from 1 to 15 myself and show you how I do the quest and how I specifically did it this wipe. The second way is AI farming and PvP. Now the best ways to do this I would say are factory farming which is going on factory and basically just killing all of the scavs that spawn because factory has a high scav spawn rate and there's not that many PMCs so if you're a little more confident with, P with PvP once you kill the other five PMCs because factory can have a total of six I believe it's five if they're all solo players but Five or six, if you kill all the other PMCs or the other PMCs die somehow, you kill the last one, then you basically have the map to yourself. Uh, you'll, you'll run into the player scav, of course, but so long as you know what you're doing, people tend to farm factory that way. Another way to do it is by farming the rogue camp on Lighthouse, and that is because the rogues provide such a high XP bonus, especially if you get the headshots, that if you really know what you're doing, and I guess this is a little more for the um, seasoned players of Tarkov, they can run in, clear the rogue cam, and run out and constantly do that for XP. But keep in mind that you're not going to be progressing your quests and getting those very important quest rewards. Lastly, here are a few tips I have for the wipe in general. If you're a new player or you're looking to ramp up your PvP this wipe, I have guides on both of these situations already. So I won't get too in-depth here, but luckily I can link them to this video. So with that out of the way, covering all the things you need as a new player or all the tips you need to up your PvP, getting comfortable on a few maps is a good idea at the start of the wipe. I guess this is more of a tip if you are on the newer side of Tarkov, and that's because Tarkov can be very overwhelming at times. There's so many angles, there's so many loot spots, there's so many places where a PMC can be, and until you know all the tricks like where people spawn, where people typically path, um, it's good to start on one map and get your feel for the game. Now I will say I'm going to play the ever-living crap out of Streets when that finally comes out because that is confirmed to come out sometime by the end of this year or early next year because that's when the or that's when we imagine the next Tarkov patch will come, the next wipe. If you're new to the game and you want to get right on the action, Streets of Tarkov is where all the loot, fun, and players are going to be probably for the first you know few weeks of the wipe. It could be a decent uh, strategy to learn that map first. But we'll see when that map actually get released and how the performance is, which is my biggest concern personally. Anyways, folks, I hope you learned something or two about the Tarkov wipes. I just want to thank everyone who stayed along to watch the whole video, even parts of it. You all are awesome. I just am blown away sometimes about how much support I get as a new YouTuber on the platform. Um, I just can't say thank you guys enough. Let me know if you guys have any tips you would like to give those out there. Throw those in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.